Mali coup leaders have released interim President Ban Dao and Prime Minister Mokta Owane. The pair was freed this morning after being held at a military camp since Monday from where they were allegedly forced to resign. The arrest brought further uncertainty to the West African country after a military coup in August which overthrew President Ibrahim Keita Da and Owani have had been tasked with overseeing an 18-month transition back to civilian rule after the takeover. The detention occurred after an announcement of a change in government in which two members of the military junta uh, that seized power in August were replaced. Let's get some more details now. For more on this, I'm joined by economist and strategist in Mali, Kasum Kulibari. Kasum, good evening and thank you very much for your time tonight. What did uh, President uh, uh, Ba Dao say uh, uh, during his resignation? cannot say nothing right now because they have been uh, released uh, yesterday night and uh, from that time to now there is no official declaration from him but we know that the attempt to resign but we don't know exactly what has been written in the, in the letter of resignation and uh, what are we hearing from the vice president uh, we say the Vice President said that uh, there is like uh, uh, a misunderstanding between the two people uh, about the, 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 the road map of the transition period, especially about the defense and security aspect, because the Vice President was in charge of all of the defense and security aspects of the transition. And most of the decisions taken by the President, the former President Ban Dao, has not been discussed before with the president, the vice president. And also, the last government that has been put in place by the former prime minister, no time to discuss with the vice president again. And they decided to remove the former minister of defense and the former minister of security. So this is the last thing that uh, caused this uh, second coup in Bali. Now, of course, it, it, it's the uh, president, the prime minister, and other officials have they all been released? No, 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 no. We just, they have just released the former president of the transition, Mr. Bandao, and the former prime minister, Mr. Mokhtawad. For the other people, I find that the secretary general of the president's office and other uh, collaborators with uh, the prime minister and some uh, uh, military officers have not been released yet because they are going through the investigation to know all of the people who have been close to the process of, of this uh, issue in country. Now, of course, uh, this resignation comes as the leader has been in uh, the office for 18 months uh, to put in place a civilian transitional government. What would be the effect of this resignation, essentially? Uh, for, for, for us now, we can understand that we are in a new beginning of the transition period. We have already lost nine months, and now we are thinking what is the new beginning of the transition period. Maybe we can have another 18 months, and maybe 24 months or 36 months again. Because the problem in Mali is so deeply difficult and complicated, we need more time for this transition period to put the foundation of a new Mali that we can be built by the citizen of Mali. So could, we could, need could these new resignations, new though, Kasum, Sorry, could these resignations, Kasum, plunge the country in, in, into uh, more instability? Yes, uh, we cannot say there is no more instability because the country was already in an instability. But what we understand now we need more inclusion of all of the stakeholders in the city, in the country, to, to bring together in the same vision and uh, to deal with the transition period. Because most of the people were excluded in the process of the transition uh, before this book in 25, 25. Now we need more inclusion of uh, the political parties, the civil society organization, the religious organization, so that we can bring a new way of for putting and discussing the way forward to have a better life for Malian people in that transition period. The UN
Afghan Security Council has reacted as well as uh, the, U U Uni uh, the African Union, I beg your pardon. What has been the reaction from the, the world body and the African Union? Uh, we have not received any formal reaction yet from the African Union, nor from the World Organization. We just received, uh, you know, a kind of uh, resolution from the Security Council of the United Nations to say that they condemn the coup. But there is no sanction against the military people who, who made this uh, uh, coup. But we think that when we remember the case of the Republic of Chad recently, where the son of the President Deby, late President Deby, took the power after the death of the President Deby, there is no sanction against uh, the Chad in military people like uh, in Mali. We, we cannot understand how they can put uh, Mali in sanction uh, in that situation. French President Emmanuel Macron has described the week's events as a, a coup. What's his reaction and uh, what decision has he taken around uh, sanctions? Who? President yes. Emmanuel Macron. French president. Uh, yes, okay. He has uh, already condemned in the principle you know, of democracy to say that they cannot accept any more coup in Mali. But I think that uh, they push the Security Council people to organize a meeting on Mali situation, but they didn't decide to put any sanction against Mali. I think that we need the support of the international community, uh, the BRICS countries, the United Nations countries, the ECOWAS and the AU uh, organization. We need support, we need assistance, we need Malian people to come in the national dialogue to see what they need for their future. Not only having sanctions against the Malian citizens. So this is a critical uh, period of the nation building. So we need assistance and we need time to discuss between citizens and the military people to find the right way where we can build our democratic institution in the country. A democratic civilian-led government, is that the best opportunity for Mali to uh, guarantee its security and prosperity? Maybe if we are in a normal situation, but we are now in a, a normal situation. The country is in a war since now uh, nine years ago. We are fighting against terrorists and jihadists all over the country. And the 80 percent of the country is, has been took by the jihadists and the terrorists. How can we only organize the civilian government in that situation where there is no security in the country. So we need a common, a joint force with military and uh, uh, civilians to join their force, their ideas, and their capacities so that we can overcome those challenges in the security aspect before moving to the total civilian government in place. Because we need that military people to recover all of the country uh, territory before we move to a now normal situation as a democratic country. Malian economist and strategist Kasum Kulibali, appreciate your time and thank you very much for joining us tonight here on the news feed late. Now, of course, we'll watch that closely and bring you developments as they happen there in Mali around that coup currently there.